Hi there, it says I'm live. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to this day in history for May 1st. May 1st is the 121st day of the year in the Gregorian calendar. 122nd in leap years with 244 days remaining to the end of the year. May 1st is also May Day, traditionally a celebration of spring. May Day traditions might include dancing around a maypole, crowning a May queen, and giving May baskets. <laughs> These would be small baskets of sweets or flowers usually left anonymously on neighbors' doorsteps. How delightful. May Day, May Day. I was just thinking as I read that about leaving something anonymously on a neighbor's doorstep. <laughs> yeah, maybe not so anonymously with ring cameras. <laughs> All right. It's the thought that counts in this case. <clears throat> Today's word is clemency. Clemency is a noun that means disposition to be merciful and especially to moderate the severity of punishment. Clemency can also refer to pleasant mildness of weather. This comes to us from the Latin word clemens, which means gentle or mild. I'm just going to take a sip of coffee here for my morning throat. <clears> throat> Hooray for coffee. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to mention that links to my sources are included in the show notes and ask you to go ahead and click that like button. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and you can share this video with others using a link in your email, messaging, or social media. And with that, Right at the top of today's list was a note that Diocletian and Maximian retired from the office of Roman Emperor on May 1st in the year 305. And when I saw that, I thought, oh, did they now? Wonder why? Because Emperor, especially Roman Emperor, is not a job anyone usually voluntarily retires from. <laughs> So let's take a look at what happened here. The Roman Empire had gotten into quite a mess in the 200s, as we mentioned recently. Diocletian came into power as emperor in late 200s, 284. So he'd seen the empire in pretty good shape when he was young and get into pretty bad shape as he became an adult. His reign stabilized the empire after the crisis of the third century that we mentioned the other day. Diocletian did accomplish some good. He negotiated some peace. He oversaw some construction pro pro projects. My mouth wanted to say progress. Construction projects. On the minus side, state expenditures were way up. Inflation seemed impossible to get under control, and he was a driving force behind one of the bloodiest official programs of persecution of Christianity. Couldn't quite wipe Christianity out, though. In his mid to upper 60s, in the year 305, Diocletian was beginning to experience declining health and had the very good sense to voluntarily retire the first Roman emperor ever to do so. He lived on for another six years until 211. Now his co-emperor Maximian had been a fellow officer with Diocletian in the military previously, and Diocletian appointed Maximian as co-emperor with Diocletian ruling over the eastern part of the empire and Maximian over the western part. When Diocletian retired, he insisted that Maximian also retire. Diocletian returned to his homeland, Dalmatia, which was kind of in the area of present-day Albania. The area of, of Dalmatia 
actually encompassed the area of several smaller current day countries there. Maximian retired to a villa in Italy, so they lived at some distance from each other, but they'd known each other a long time. They were good friends and they kept up with each other, they stayed in touch. And while Maximian did retire with Diocletian in 305, he couldn't quite give up his ambitions to be emperor. He, he kept trying to make another run at it. He tried to elbow his way back into the position a couple times, and neither of those worked out well for him. In the year 310, he was captured and charged with crimes, and he was granted, he was granted clemency, but encouraged to commit suicide. Maximian hung himself in July of 310. Diocletian, of course, heard of Maximian's escapades all along the way. This had to be distressing to him, or at least annoying. But what are you going to do? Diocletian lived until the late uh, until late 311. The Act of Union joined England and Scotland to form the Kingdom of Great Britain, and this took effect on May 1st, 1707. Josiah Wedgwood founded the Wedgwood Pottery Company in Great Britain on May 1st, 1759. And I remember as a kid seeing a, a few accent pieces, not like whole sets or anything, but a few accent pieces. I don't know if they were real Wedgwood or, or uh, imitations, but they were very nicely done. Wedgwood Pottery. <clears throat> the first official adhesive postage stamp called the Penny Black, was issued in the United Kingdom on May 1st, 1840. This was actually an innovation in postage. Up to that time, British postal rates were high and difficult to understand, perhaps arbitrary. The recipient of mail had to pay postage on delivery and charges were based on how many sheets there were and, and how far they'd traveled. One never knew how much that might end up being. I need to send you a letter and you've got to pay for it when it gets there. What if you don't like what I sent you? <laughs> That's how it was. And so a man named uh, Sir Roland Hill wanted to have some kind of system where postage was prepaid and that letters of up to a half ounce, 14 grams, could be delivered at a flat rate, regardless of the distance that they had traveled. <clears throat> he presented the idea of a prepaid stamp. Cut it out. He presented the idea of a prepaid stamp and a prepaid envelope. Now, of course, we all know what an envelope looks like today but apparently this was a new thing back then. It was described as a separate sheet folded to form an enclosure for carrying letters. Brilliant idea. You know, we've grown up with them. We think they've existed forever. <laughs> Maybe not so much. The idea was accepted. The, Id and a, uh, the idea was accepted and a design was chosen for the stamp. This design for the first stamp, the Penny Black, included a profile of Queen Victoria. And there you go. Now, these stamps were issued beginning today, May 1st. Uh, they were valid to use beginning May 6th. Prepaid postage, one half ounce, any distance. Good job. In another bit of British news, Queen Victoria opened the Great Exhibition at the Crystal Palace in London on May 1st, 1851. This is the birthday of American frontiers woman known as Calamity Jane, born May 1st, 1856. I talked more about Calamity Jane and a few other things in last year's episode, for instance, Theo Van Gogh, Vincent's younger brother. There were race riots in Tennessee, a labor riot in Chicago, 
and a few other topics. And I will link that episode up in the corner there once the live is finished and we go to replay. This is the birthday of American astronomer and ufologist J. Allen Hynek, born May 1st, 1910. Best known for his his, uh, UFO research, he developed the Close Encounter Classification System. We recently watched the, t- the I'm going to say TV show, it was a History Channel uh, movie and uh, miniseries, a History Channel miniseries called Project Blue Book. It's not available at the History Channel anymore, nor is it available for free. Uh, we paid to watch it on Apple TV. And uh, it turns out to be a pretty interesting show. They took the stories from things that actually happened. I think that probably it is a little bit fictionalized to keep it interesting. But it it did make me feel good about J. Allen Hynek. He, he may have gained a reputation as a debunker during his career, but this series kind of made me think about him a little bit differently. J. Allen Hynek lived to the age of 75. On May 1st, 1930, the name Pluto was officially proposed for a newly discovered dwarf planet, Pluto. The Empire State Building was dedicated on May 1st, 1931. The polio vaccine was developed by Jonas Salk and made available to the public on May 1st, 1956. And SpongeBob SquarePants premiered on Nickelodeon May 1st, 1999. I guess I was a little bit aware of SpongeBob SquarePants, but thought, yeah, whatever. And then some years ago when a couple of my granddaughters had come to visit. They liked SpongeBob SquarePants, so that's what we watched. And I came to appreciate SpongeBob SquarePants. <laughs> anyway, he had his premiere on Nickelodeon, May 1st, 1999. Maybe an acquired taste if you happen to be an adult. Anyway, I think that's going to do it for us today. That's all I have anyway for now. As always, links to my sources are in the show notes. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for that like. All the people who watch in the replay, give it a like if you enjoyed it. (laughs) And uh, feel free to share this video if you found it interesting or informative. All righty, just looking through here, seeing if there's anything else that I need to tell you about. Uh, again, I'll, uh, I'll link the playlist to the Stay in History along with the um, last year's episode up there in the corner. Alrighty, now we look for the thank you very much button. And thank you so much for watching. In 2021, this is a Saturday, so go have yourselves a wonderful Saturday. And I'll see you tomorrow.